So I'm very, very pleased to introduce our next speaker. Lisa Jackson is the Vice President of Environmental Policy and Social Initiatives at Apple. And I think everybody recognizes that company. So without further ado, I'm just going to introduce Lisa to speak for a minute. Uh, good, good morning still. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, thank you, Amy. Uh, and I know they're already gone, but I have to say in absentia, absentia hi to my uh, dear friend, Secretary Ernie Moniz, and uh, my even dearer friend, Rachel Kite. I, I missed their presentation this morning because they had another meeting, and I'm sorry, because I know it was entertaining and also informative, because they both are. It is really great to be here in New York, uh, really excited to help kick off Climate Week, one of my favorite times of year. Uh, I laugh when I say that because I have lots of favorite times, but here it's my favorite because you get, you know, a thousand of the world's brightest minds together in clearly one of the world's greatest cities um, to deal with one of the world's most pressing challenges, and I think, as usual, historic things are bound to happen out of that mixture. We are actually in a moment where many people, I think even the most optimistic of us, uh, worry that we'd never get here. But here we are, just months after reaching the first binding global agreement to address climate change, with the world's two largest emitters already officially signed on to the pact, with governments and businesses and individuals across the planet, finally unified and moving forward with the same vital vision in mind. So for me, to me, this is a time of tremendous opportunity. Now all of you who are here, and really many, many of us who aren't here today, played a unique role in getting us to this point, and congratulations. I am really proud of the work that I was able to do at EPA to just help lay the groundwork for the regulations that will help the U.S. meet its greenhouse gas reduction commitment. And now I lead environmental work and worldwide government affairs for Apple. So I'm even prouder of the innovation that we in the public sector and the private sector are showing in the drive towards a clean energy economy. So I don't think we should miss the opportunity this week to celebrate how far we've come and the phenomenal amount of painstaking effort that has gone into making all of this happen. But I think we all know that despite all of that work, this is really where the work begins yet again. Now, I started at Apple in 2013, and many people ask me how I made the decision to uh, make Apple my next step after spending almost my entire career up until that point in public service. And my answer is really simple, and one I'll use today in my speech, it's that I knew it was a company where I wouldn't have to leave public service behind. I'm very fortunate to work for our CEO, Tim Cook, who is steadfastly driven by a desire to leave the world better than we found it and understands the ability for a company of Apple size to drive broad global change. So we take that approach in our environmental work as well, looking at our impact throughout every phase of our operations, the energy that we consume, the waste that we generate, and yes, the material used in our products. When it comes to energy, we already power all of our data centers around the world with 100% renewable sources. 100% at every data center that we run. And we're 100% renewable for all of our facilities here in the US, in China, and in 21 other countries around the world. In fact, in 2015, 93% of the electricity Apple used around the world in our facilities came from renewable sources. That's 93% renewable for our offices, our data centers, and our retail stores. Of course, we're a little bit of uh, the perfectionists at Apple, so our eyes are on 100%. And we won't stop until we get there, and most importantly, we have to stay there. That's why I'm proud to announce that Apple has joined RE100 reaffirming our commitment to 100% renewable energy, 
to get that last 7%. Apple is a company that has long been invested in driving the global transition to green energy. So I couldn't be happier to see our name listed amongst those influential global companies that are working towards the same effort. We're excited to discuss what we've learned with other member companies and work together to advocate for clean energy policies around the world. Now we're particularly eager to work with RE100 on pushing renewable energy into the manufacturing supply chain, which is a key focus for us at Apple. More on that in a few minutes. All of us share a commitment to doing our part to reduce carbon emissions, and we share the knowledge that no one business, no one organization, no one country, no individual, of course, can do it alone. We also understand the tremendous amount of hard work and innovation that goes into sourcing renewable energy around the world. And we know that it's more difficult to source good, reliable, clean energy projects in some places than others. So when you look at the broad scope of Apple's energy use around the world, you see us doing everything from building huge renewable energy projects of our own to being registered as a utility in order to access the power we're purchasing from a third party solar farm, farm in California, to buying power from rooftop solar panels in Singapore's crowded urban landscape where there isn't space for expansive PV arrays on the ground. These types of innovative solutions have been vitally important in helping us get to 93% globally. But our challenge is also to continue investing in new innovative sources to continue our trajectory as our business continues to grow. And sometimes that means creating new projects in countries where we're already at 100% renewable. So I'm happy to announce today that we finished construction on our latest re major renewable energy project, a 50 megawatt solar farm on roughly 300 acres in Florence, Arizona. This new project will provide electricity for the data command center we're building nearby in Mesa, Arizona, producing up to 151 million kilowatt hours each year. That's equal to the energy use of over 12,000 Arizona homes. And we've been working in very close partnership with the local utility there. It's the Salt River Project to make this happen. We believe that projects like these will help make sure our customers around the world can feel confident that the electricity we use to power their iMessages and their FaceTime video chats and their Siri questions all won't contribute to climate change. And they move us ever closer to our goal of 100% renewable power globally, but staying there at 100% even as we grow. Now, while we're working to close that 7% final gap, we're also looking to help our suppliers make the same transition to clean energy that we have. This is important because when we look at our comprehensive carbon footprint, we see that 77% of our carbon emissions fall in our supply chain, almost entirely at companies at manufacturing sites that we neither own nor operate directly. So last year, we took a major step and launched a supplier clean energy program designed to help our manufacturing partners lower their energy use and put renewable energy projects online. We're just now rounding out the first year of our supplier clean energy program and have already helped our suppliers in Japan, mainland China, and Taiwan identify potential energy savings, reductions of over 200 million kilowatt hours of electricity. And now we're working with them to turn those identified opportunities into reductions. Apple is also leading the way with renewable energy projects in some of our most important manufacturing markets. We've committed to working with suppliers to install more than four gigawatts of new clean energy worldwide by 2020, including two gigawatts of new clean energy in China. And we're building more than 200 megawatts of solar in China, starting with 170 megawatts in Inner Mongolia to begin offsetting our manufacturing emissions. We're also bringing key suppliers along on this journey with us, true partners. It started with Foxconn, which committed to install 400 megawatts of solar over the next two years to cover the electricity use of its iPhone final production facility in Zhenzhou, China. 
And in the past few months, we had other major suppliers commit to power all of their Apple production with renewable energy. We announced the first commitment just a few weeks ago when Lens Technology, a major iPhone cover glass manufacturer, committed to power all of its Apple production with 100% renewable energy by 2018. Tim and I met with Lens's CEO in China and commended her for making such a comprehensive clean energy commitment. Lens will be meeting its goal through a first of its kind power purchase agreement with local wind projects in Hunan province. And by 2018, they'll be avoiding nearly 450,000 metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions a year. And now today, I'm thrilled to announce that Salve Specialty Polymers, which supplies us with the antenna bands that allow your iPhone to access Wi-Fi, cellular data, Bluetooth, and near-field communication, is committing to 100% renewable energy for all Apple production. This covers 14 manufacturing facilities across eight countries by the end of 2018. I have to say that again because you guys didn't even react. <laughs> Let me repeat. 14 manufacturing facilities across eight countries. Let's hear it for Salve. I think Salve is showing tremendous leadership by switching to clean energy for Apple production in China, in India, in France, in Germany, in Italy, in South Korea, in the US, and their home country of Belgium. They're going to get there through a variety of solutions from on-site renewables to power purchase agreements. Now I work for Apple, so you know I have one more thing. I'm really happy to announce that Catcher Technology, one of Apple's largest aluminum enclosure suppliers, is also targeting 100% renewable power for its production of Apple goods also by the end of 2018. We expect this will reduce emissions by nearly 600,000 metric tons a year, which is the equivalent of removing nearly 125,000 passenger vehicles from the road each year. And like Lens, it's an important example of leadership in helping advance China's transition to a green economy. Now these are massive, bold, and achievable pledges by our suppliers. All together, Catcher, Lens, Salve, Foxconn, and other supplier commitments we've seen just to date will represent over 1.5 billion kilowatt hours per year of clean energy used in the manufacturing of Apple products by the end of 2018. Just to give you a sense of that scale, I think you all know though, 1.5 billion kilowatt hours is equal to the amount of electricity consumed by over 1 million Chinese homes. These acts of leadership by our suppliers are so important because they demonstrate that large manufacturers do value where their energy comes from and are increasingly demanding greater amounts of clean energy worldwide. And Lens and Catcher are showing that renewable energy is not only a reality in China, but can even be done for energy intensive manufacturing processes like making cover glass or making aluminum enclosures. The progress we've seen in this program in just a short period of time, a little under a year, is truly unprecedented. So I'm confident that we're just at the beginning. Believe me, we're using all the influencing power we have to encourage other suppliers to join us on this journey, but we're also meeting incredible leaders when we do. These are people who are stepping up, and Apple is very much in the support role. One of the things we do is to share best practices in procuring clean energy and building high quality renewable projects. That is a huge help to companies for whom that is not their main business. We're also providing hands-on assistance to some suppliers in areas like energy efficiency audits, regulatory guidance, building strong partnerships, all to bring new clean energy projects online. We are firm believers that everyone has a responsibility to address climate change. At Apple, Tim says we have to be the ripple in the pond. We can't just be 100% renewable. We have to bring others on the journey. 
So we will continue to value manufacturers in our supply chain that work with us. We value the work they do in tackling climate change, and we will continue to value it. So I think it's clear we have a lot of thinking and we put a lot of thinking and hard work into our efforts. And we're really proud to be a company that's leading the way toward a clean energy future, working with partners around the world. But we recognize that there's still more to be done and that we cannot do it alone. The business community is looking to governments to put in place policies that help and nudge the private sector toward decarbonization. That's why Apple joined our peers at Google, Microsoft, and Amazon to sign an amicus brief in support of EPA's Clean Power Plan. As leading U.S. businesses, we wanted to send a clear message to lawmakers that renewable energy is good for business. Apple's also looking to the U.S. government to continue to provide funding for research and development so scientists can invent the next generations of clean energy technology. And in other countries, like mainland China, Japan, Taiwan, and South Korea, where we and others do a significant portion of our manufacturing, we continue to advocate for strong clarity in renewable energy policy. We're also looking to India, where we're seeing some promising efforts on renewables as well. What we need are clearly defined me mechanisms to allow manufacturing companies and others to access 100% clean energy for their operations. And it should include the ability for customers to choose where their energy originates and select 100% clean and renewable power. This also means a level and transparent playing field for renewable energy. In China, for example, we're working with local governments to reduce the barriers to direct power purchase agreements from renewable energy producers. And we need to see objective, clear, and straight standardized accounting systems for renewable energy, which allows us to ensure the credibility, the reliability of companies' clean energy commitments. And finally, to truly avoid catastrophic climate change, we need all companies in all sectors to reduce carbon emissions. Putting a price on carbon would be a major step in the push to help businesses make the global energy shift. We've had the science on climate change for years, and the economics are becoming increasingly apparent as well. Without clear market signals, too few companies will act. A price on carbon would begin to address the global market's failure to factor in the long term cost of greenhouse gas pollution. And of course, when we finally start factoring the true impact of carbon intensive electricity and fuel the world uses today, and we incorporate that true impact directly into the cost of goods and services, it will unleash yet another wave of innovation. Businesses will respond as they always do, inventing and adopting new ways to minimize the cost they will invest at a very large scale to make low carbon technologies much more affordable and available. And then they will deploy those technologies. And that in turn will minimize the prospect of devastating climate change. We're not taking a position on whether cap and trade or carbon tax is the best policy. That's a decision each government will have to make on its own. Some already have. But whatever decisions are made, we need the governments of the world to address climate change through carefully designed and thoughtful policies which address this most critical of market failures by putting a price on carbon. <laughs> Yay! Energy is the leading cause of carbon pollution in the world. So the broad development of clean, renewable energy is necessary to address it. This makes renewable energy a tremendous global economic opportunity. So in conclusion, Apple is proud to be a business that is working to lead the global transition to renewable energy and to be joining a group of other great businesses today that share in that mission. And we are encouraged by the strong commitments we are seeing from our suppliers to transition to clean energy. I think it's clear that there's the will and the motivation across global markets for a large scale energy shift and I'm sure there'll be many more conversations this week and to come about how to accomplish that. 
Most of all, I'm grateful to all of you for being here today. You have been the advocates. You've been the investors. You've been the fighters for a clean energy future because you understand and have understood how important it is that we act. And it continues to be important that we act now. Together, we have the tools we need to maximize the economic opportunities of the green energy economy and protect our planet from the worst impacts of climate change. Let's do that together. Thank you all so much.